everybody. This is the day the Lord has made. And you know what? Well, we say that all the time, but there ought to be an excitement because you're in Christ Jesus. Amen. He, he's still the author and finisher of our faith. Amen. I said He's still the author and finisher of our faith. And what he started, he is going to complete. I guarantee you that what he started, he's going to complete. It might look like a mess right now, but it's going to be turned into a miracle. Come on, somebody. That's why we come to the house of God. Because he's the God that can take a mess and turn it into a miracle. He can take a mess and turn it into a mess head. Come on, somebody. I'm talking about the God that made the wind, the rain, the, the ocean, the planetary system that we are still trying to understand, discover, and uncover. I want you to just hug somebody, high five them before you take your seat and tell them you are standing in the right place at the right time. And tell them to get ready because there's a word that is going to be deposited in your spirit that will help you with the wheat that's coming forth. That will help you fight the devil. That will help you deal with every principality, with every power, with every ruling spirit, with everything that's not like God. Oh, when we come to the house of God, we ought to be excited. Amen, somebody? I want you to open up your Bible to the Word of God. Today we're going to be talking about the, the, the understanding, helping you to understand the characteristics of the church. We come here week after week after week. And I'm going to need you all to pray for me. There's so much pollen and stuff in the air. And I don't want to be hindered by that today. But let's look to the word of the Lord in Ephesians chapter 3. And I want to start at verse 9. But our focus scripture will be uh, verse 10. It says, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which is from the beginning the world hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Verse 10, to, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Did y'all see that? Principalities and powers in heavenly places. In heavenly places. In the good times, you're dealing with principalities and powers. In the bad times, at all times, you're always dealing with a principality and a power. But the Bible tells us as we continue on in the text that, 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 that this is happening because it might be known by the church. Somebody say, this is why you need to come to church. Because it's in the church the knowledge is going to come forth to help you deal with every principality, every power, and every ruling spirit. It says that it might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the intention of your word. We thank you for the wisdom of your word. We thank you for the power of your word. We thank you for the might of your word. And we thank you that every word that you have spoken, you said it will not return unto you void. We thank you that in your word are promises. We thank you in your word there is privilege to be called the sons and the daughters of God. We thank you for your word because you said when heaven and earth fade away, your word will remain. Hallelujah. We thank you that it was a word that put the devil in his place and taught us that we have all authority and we have an ability to crush the head of every serpent, every scorpion, and every power of the devil. I need the church to wake up and help me preach today. I need your participation by clapping your hands, by shouting unto the Lord, by saying hallelujah. You got to say something when the word of God is going. You can't sit in your seat and scratch and pick your nose and check your Facebook page while the presence of the Lord is here to heal you, to shake you, to quake you. Because the Bible says that there's a shaking coming in everything that can be shaken will be shaken by 
of the Lord. Come on and give him a praise. I'm looking for the witness while I'm alive. I don't need the witness of the Lord when I'm dead and in the grave. I, I need to see the witness of the Lord while, while, while I'm in the land. But you're going to see the very thing that your eyes had not imagined. Your ears couldn't hear, neither had it entered into your heart. The things, Minister Brandon, that God has promised for us. Somebody say for me. And this is why you have to understand, have your seat. You have to understand the characteristics of the church. You cannot be moved by numbers. You cannot be moved by stiff-necked folk who have not learned how to honor God and give Him praise. And you, you know, praise is your breakthrough. Praise is what keeps you from breaking down so you can get your breakthrough. And the devil has been on assignment since Christ died to keep the people away from the church. We live in a culture where the culture thinks the church is shady, that the church wants your money. You don't make enough money, hello, to meet the vision of what God wants to do. Now, your portion is necessary, but it ain't enough to where somebody got to steal your 32 cents. Amen, somebody. And the enemy got you held up and held hostage. You won't even honor God with a tent. Come on, somebody. He can do more with your tent than your obedience than you can do with holding on to the 90 percent that you thank you so much. God can take a little bit and make a lot out of it. He can use a mustard seed and increase your faith. Come on, somebody. He said he can steal the storm to a whisper and every wave of the sea has to hush. Look at your neighbor and say, hush. We're talking about the church. The church manifests the kingdom that's in heaven on earth. It's just the reverse. And I know when God looks down out of the annals of heaven, he's like, oh my God, what are they doing? So the church has some characteristics that you need to understand. You know, that word character uh, is, is taught to us in the mindset of a typeset. You know, you can go if you're in Word and you're typing a letter, you can pick a particular character. They call those characters. And characters represent a style. You have a style of writing. You have a style of being the way you be. You, you have characteristics that are exclusively to you uh, and people can identify you by a characteristic. So when we're talking about understanding the characteristics of the church, we are helping you, number one, to understand that the church is a microcosm of the kingdom. Come on, somebody. I've been teaching on helping you understand the kingdom and the difference between church folk and kingdom folk. Those of y'all that pressed your way today, you about kingdom business. Amen, somebody? We all are called to be about our Father's business. Every one of us have an assigned business adventure, not venture, but adventure in the kingdom of God. So the church manifests the kingdom of heaven in the earth realm. And the church is a microcosm of kingdom. Can you say the church is a microcosm of the kingdom. Secondly, the church is an orgasm. It's an orb. Don't go sexual. I ain't talking like that. Now, it might pop like that, but I I I'm talking about it, it, it is orgasmic in the sense that you get in the atmosphere of a right church and things will pop off. There is an explosion in your soul that will make you have hope when you lost hope. Come on, somebody. And, and, and that's what we want you to understand when we're looking at the characteristics of the church. Thirdly, the church is the primary place where we learn about the potential and the developmental heart and mind of God. Can you say amen to that? You're not going to learn about church staying home, watching TV and, and all of that. So when we look at the fact that the church, y'all stay with me, I'm going to be done. But the church is a smaller represented system having characteristics of a larger system. 
Okay, this is why the Bible said the gates of hell are not going to prevail against the church. Now, there's some prevailing against the church, but the gates of hell will never prevail against the church because the church has characteristics that come from heaven that are manifested on earth. It's a larger system in constitution, in configuration, and in development. What do I mean by constitution? Have any of you read the Constitution of the United States of America? I know Attorney Kelly has because she's an attorney. And uh, attorneys uh, deal with laws and principles by which we say this nation ought to be governed. Well, it's likewise with the church. The church has a constitution, which are the basic principles and the basic laws. Where do we find this constitution? We find the constitution in the word of God. Amen, somebody. Then, then, then there is the issue of the church uh, being a, a configuration. And, and a configuration is talking about an arrangement of parts. You are part of a system, a part of a microcosm that has to fit in. The next thing that we're going to begin to talk to you all about as a church is where do you fit? What are you supposed to be doing? Why are you just coming and warming a seat? Why are you not plugging in? Why have you not found your place? Why have you not found out, God, what do you want me to do in this microcosm kingdom called the church? What do you want me to do? I know I'm not supposed to just come in, sit, not speak to nobody, and walk out the door. What is my assignment according to the gift in the book of Corinthians? I know you've given me a gift, God. What is it, and how can I begin to plug it in to the microcosm of the thing called church? Then there's the developmental aspect, the act of uh, uh, restarting what it is God began in you. He said, I put something in you and, and it's got to develop. You can't start speaking in tongues and stop. Okay? You can feel with God's spirit and your manifestation is a tongue. But the moment that happened, it never happened again. No, God is saying develop your prayer life. It sounds crazy to you, but my Holy Ghost is bringing it back and articulating everything in you that had to come out through a moaning. Uh, the Bible says there are moanings and travailings that you can't utter, but the Holy Ghost can utter it and take it to the Father and make the request known, and then you get the desire of your heart. Where's the moaning microcosmic church? We don't even moan no more. We just come in functified, stale. And you need the lubrication of the Holy Ghost so you can start sliding and gliding in the will of the Father for you. I like this side. Y'all are with me today. Amen. Amen, somebody. You better open your ears. So when we talk about this constitution, this configuration and the development, we are talking about, yes, a building, but it's really talking about you. You are the church. You are the church. What are you demonstrating before the world as the church? Are you a mad church? You a quiet church? You a dumb church? What kind of manifestation as a church are you ex uh, expressing at work in your community? Uh, first of all, you have to understand that microcosm uh, uh, it talks about a community or unity that it, 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 it epitomizes a larger thing. So if you are small-minded, because you're going to keep hearing this word larger and larger and larger, because that's what God does when he comes in our life through Jesus Christ. He takes what was small and he makes it large. Amen, somebody. He takes what was broken and he builds it up. Amen, somebody. He takes peasants and make them players in the kingdom. Hey, uh -huh. Amen, somebody. Come on. I, you know, I don't want to be a player no more, but I'll be a player in the kingdom of God. So, so, so the microcosm, it, it epitomizes, if you're taking notes, something larger. Because God doesn't do things small. And shame on you if you're sitting in a church and the word is good and the anointing is available and you still choose to stay small. One day you'll have to give an account for that. So the kingdom of God, all spheres of the domain are under God. That's what the kingdom is. And we've been talking about that on Wednesday night. The kingdom of heaven involves a universal uh, thing called the church 
which is the place where God again manifests. I'm going to keep saying some stuff because you got to understand where you are and what you are and how you are supposed to be in this thing. The church is cosmopolitan. Which means a world citizen. This thing is worldwide. There's not a place you can walk on the face of the earth and not find a church. If you go to the to, to Australia where the aborigines are, you're going to find some form of a church. It might not be like this. When you go to Africa, I went to Africa and baby, they, they know how to stomp in a dirt tent. Amen, somebody? They gave praise like I had never seen. And, and our generation, we want it comfortable. It's too hot. I'm tired of these chairs. I, I don't know why. You always looking at the clock. The reason we see miracles in nations that know they need a God, because they're not clock watching. They Jesus watching. I hope they hurry up today. I might hold y'all hostage for three hours just because I can. But the church is cosmopolitan. The church is free, listen, from local uh, uh, and natural prejudice attachments that are found to the rest of the world. In other words, the church operates independently on its own. Don't need nobody, don't have to have nobody, because God is the one in charge of the church. God supernaturally birthed the church in seed form, and as a seed, it was multicultural, multi-ethnic, multinational body of believers. I'm going to say that again. The church the church ain't white, the church ain't black, the church ain't Republican, the church ain't Democratic, the church, the church, the church is multicultural, the church is multi-ethnic, the church is a multinational body of believers that Jesus Christ died and was raised and is the only one that can give me interest into this microcosm kingdom called the church. So the church is competitive. Is suited to compete. Woo, y'all gotta catch that the devil is no match for the church. He likes to tinker around and, and, and be in, uh, get in where he can get in, but he is no match for the church. The church is competitive and it is suited to compete. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violent, but what? The violent take it by force. So that means we ain't no penny any salt. You know, I can be soft when I need to, but you need to be a thug against the host of hell. Come on, somebody. That thug anointing me to rise up on you, and you gotta understand that the weapons of our warfare are mighty to the pulling down of every stronghold and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, not the power of God, the knowledge of God, because when we come to church, we are trying to get knowledge, and if I get the knowledge, the power just falls on me, so the church is competitive, look at your neighbor and say, the church is competitive, ain't no punk church. It's only a punk church if you have bastardized your ministry by breaking off from another church uh, illegally and starting another church. And there's so many bastardized fatherless churches. Because people don't understand that we, we're, we're, we're in a fight. And you can fight and be cute. You ain't got to take your teeth off, your wig off. You can fight and be cute. Because all you got to do is say, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. I put a rebuke on that. And after I rebuke, I'm going to decree and declare what's already been promised in his word. Amen, somebody. You ain't got to cuss the devil. You ain't got to talk about his teeth. You ain't got to talk about his feet. All you have to do is stand in what is already written. Because I already understand the church is competitive and we've already won. We've already won. And it's so sad that you don't know that because you don't your, your character doesn't express that you are a winner. The, the, your character doesn't often express that I'm a victor and not a victim. I was victimized growing up, uh, but I'm a victor. So I don't have to live out that which was done to me because now I'm his from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got, everything I'm not, I'm yours. Try me now and see if I can be completely yours. And that's the competitive nature of the church, which is you. I need y'all to just give God a praise right there. 
Now the scripture said to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places uh, might be known by the church the manifold wisdom. Do you know when you come to church, you have may, may have been ignorant and dumb and, and uh, that's all you've been around, but do you know you become a wise man or woman by participating in the church? Age don't mean you wise. I know some old fools, anybody? Just because you old, chronologically, don't mean you have wisdom. And God can give you wisdom. He can release wisdom when you understand the characteristics of the church. So the church is perfect and complete, having no deficiencies. Oh my God. The church is perfect and complete, having no deficiencies. Now what this is meaning, you may be in a church like our church. We are in a restart and a repositioning mode, right? So it may be some stuff that ain't working right or going right, but nevertheless it's not deficient. We just have to tap into the knowledge and the wisdom and make sure that everybody's on board, amen? We don't want no folks just hanging on for the ride and part-time lovers. We need full-time lovers of Jesus Christ, amen? God wants his church to be healthy and mature, to be complete, a place where all cultures are welcome and appreciated, an environment of love, acceptance, forgiveness, a place where people are encouraged to learn from their mistakes. Because as long as you live, you're going to make a mistake. But when you come to a church, we want you to understand that you can learn from that. You can learn from it. In Colossians 2 and 10, the Bible says that you are complete in him. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm complete in him. The Bible says in Colossians 2 and 10, you are complete in him, which is the head of principalities and powers. There's that word again, principalities and powers. Let me, let me just say this. If you find yourself in a repetitive cycle of a thing, okay, it's repetitive. I keep meeting Buster. He's a different Buster, but he's a Buster. <laughs> then that's a repetitive cycle that needs to change. That's a principality and a power and a ruling spirit that you in working out your soul salvation has to work out. Listen, the other thing about the church, we said you come in here and you learn, you've got to invest in your kingdom. You've got to in invest in the church that you are and not expect to be food fed. Amen. Some of us, we just want to open our mouth and give what God got. We just want the blessing. We just want the miracle. We just want the manifestation. But we don't want to invest in educating ourselves. Because the church is an educational institution. Where we come and we learn. If I was an F student, I at least can become a B or an A student depending on my investment. And most of your investment in understanding the characteristics of a church is going to be your time. Your time investment. Some of y'all are just Sunday saints and you're going to have a slow raggedy life in the kingdom because all you do is invest on Sunday as though that's enough with all the demons and, and stupidity you're dealing with. One day ain't enough, amen, because we're dealing with the devil every day. You're a Sunday saint. And that's wrong. You're going to grow up. So the church is a, it's an orgasmic um, entity where individuals are, are, are constituted to carry on activities. That's what that means, O-R-G-A-N-I-S-M. It means that you as an individual, you come and you carry on activities. What activities? Uh, the, the, the gifts of the Spirit in the book of Corinthians. You find out which gift you have and you come in here and you use it. You find out you've got a healing anointing, start using it. You find out you have the gift of mercy, start using it. You find out you've got the gift of, uh, of giving, use it. Amen, somebody. So the body of Christ, the church, is not an organization, but it is an organism comprised of many interconnected parts. You are one of those parts. You are one of those parts. It is a, a, a vitality connected to the head of the body, which of course is Christ, from which we receive nourishment, 
direction, and guidance. You know, God is a nurturer, and I'm going to tell you how the Bible says he is the El Shaddai. And El Shaddai means the many-breasted ones. Who would have imagined that God had a breast that you could be fed off of and receive nourishment, guidance, and direction? Come on, somebody. We, we, we try to see and image God, but the very fact that we are in a body gives us a picture of what God looks like. I don't know if he's 6'2", uh, 280, I don't know all of that, but I know that because he's El Shaddai, El Shaddai means the many-breasted one. What are breasts created for? Breasts are created for feeding and nurturing, and if you marry, hello somebody for some pleasure. You know, you 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 want to know that when you order in your chicken. Some of y'all are thought chicken eaters, and some of you are breast eaters, and some of you like a wing. Come on, somebody. Some of you like the gizzard part. Amen. But 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 God is saying you need to be here because you need to be nourished, you need to be guided, and you need direction because you've been walking around in Wawa Land, you've been walking around in Wooville. And you need, I don't care how old you are, you're going to need nourishment, guidance, and direction. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15 and 16 says, we are to grow up in every way. We ought to grow up in every way in him who is the head, the Christ, from the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. Every joint is equipped. I'm going to prophesy right here, you are already equipped. If you've named Jesus Christ as you, you sitting way back in Egypt, brother, but you already equipped. You just got to put the tools in your hand and get to work. You are already equipped. Look at your neighbor and say, you are already equipped. And the Bible goes on to say that when each part is working properly, makes the body grow. So that it builds itself up in love. I just read in your hearing Ephesians chapter 4 verse 15 and 16. So uh, 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 the, the church is dynamic. The church is energetic. It, it, it is productive. The, the church is diverse. It means we are different from one another. We've had different experiences. We grew up differently. Amen, somebody. The Bible tells us that every nation and tongue uh, uh, will be represented before the throne in his kingdom. Every nation. Nations you don't even know that exist because you don't like National Geographic. And that's okay, but just think about that. Every nation and tongue, not spiritual tongues, but every language, every ethnos will one day have to bow before the kingdom. And when that bowing takes place, it's going to be some nappy heads, some straight heads. Come on, somebody. Some blue eyes, some green eyes, some cock eyes. You know, it's going to be all kind of diversity. At the throne of God, receiving the nourishment that only he can give. So when we look at the church being dynamic, when we look at the church being dynamic, we're number one saying the characteristic of a dynamic church, which every church should be dynamic. And we're not talking about, let me help you, we, we live in a culture now. Like when people walk in here, they don't know this is temporary. So don't get stuck on what's temporary because we have a bright future. Amen, somebody. But you, you go in a church and they got the, the you think you're at a concert. Because we've adapted that from the world. When the church ought to be dictating culture. But culture is dictating to the church. And it's wrong. The things that God says no to, it is no. I don't care if you tell me I am uh, living my truth. Your truth is a lie and that is ugly on you. I'm just, I'm so happy everybody accepts that I can live my truth. If it ain't this truth, it's a lie. Clap your hands right there. And that's the culture we in. And the church ought to be the one dictating. But because we don't understand the characteristics and the role, the church is weakened, but never really weak. You just have to find what the Bible says. I'm keeping a remnant. That's what God said. I will always have a remnant. 
And a remnant in thousands of people is a few people that will cry out, Abba, Father, please teach me how to change this culture. Now let me help you. <coughs> Before you change a culture, you need to change the culture within yourself. You need to work on your stinking thinking. You need to work on why you're not healed from what happened to you 30 years ago. You, you need, come on somebody, y'all be clapping right there. You, you need to work on why you keep attracting junk and, and expecting junk to turn out to be a jewel. Junk is junk and a jewel is a jewel. And this is why you come to church because you get to hear answers for these situations. I said the church is diverse, which means we're different from one another. We do not all have to be the same. The only sameness that we need is that we have the same love and fervency for Jesus Christ. That's the only thing we need to be, be saying in. So radically, the Bible says the church ought to be radical because God created human beings with a biological capacity to produce. Amen. God did that. You know you can be raised in a home where you are so abused and so maligned that you don't think you have an ability to produce because your mama didn't produce, because your daddy wasn't a producer, you can grow up with this twisted concept that I don't have the ability to produce. But the Bible tells me in Jeremiah that I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you hope. Plans for a future. So that means that you have the, uh, the capacity to produce uh, a tremendous variety because God told us way back in Genesis that you are to what? Be fruitful and to multiply. That don't mean have 30 babies and you make 20,000 uh, a year. That don't mean that. You've got a group of people that got that twisted. I'm not letting nobody impregnate me every year for 30 years and we got 30 years and, and, and broke and disgusted. Hello, somebody? That don't mean that. That means you find out what God has exclusively created you to do and bring that due to the house of God so we can all do what we do together. Amen, somebody. So culturally, because God created humans in his image and commanded them to what? Subdue. When was the last time you subdued a thing? Hello, church. What well, when? Was the last time you subdued a thing and you know you subdued it and after you subdued it you just felt victorious? How about subduing generational curses that are in your family? I subdued that thing. I subdued witchcraft. I subdued the sexual molestation that I endured. I subdued the rejection and the emotional and physical abuse that I subdued it so that I could walk supremely in the call and uh, knowledge that God has given me. Stop waiting on people to come and apologize for what they've done to you. They are not going to do it. Stop waiting on people to come and acknowledge that they hurt you and, and you waiting on an apology. They have gone on with their life because they church folk and not kingdom minded. They don't care. And you're waiting and waiting. They need to apologize. It's not going to happen. Unless they get saved and unless the Holy Spirit has them to come back. I don't even look for it because I know what kind of climate. We talked about culture, but then there's a climate that this system of the world has. And unless you are a strong and wise believer, you are going to be at the back of the line instead of the front. When the Bible says he made us the head and not the tail, you're going to stay with the tail. And if you think about the positioning of a tail on any animal, it's where the stink hole is. And I'm not staying there, amen? Oh, clap right there. Yeah, I said it. I'm not staying where the stink hole is. I'm not going to do it because I'm called to, the Bible says there's a fragrant anointing. Amen, somebody, that, that ought to ooze off of your life. Even if you don't have your bath and body work lotion on and the spray and all that. Really, I tried to use all of that stuff like right at one time, right? You use the body scrub, then you get the lotion, then you, I was stinging and burning. 
too much going on. Try, you know, trying to make a, a, an aroma come forth. I was toe up. Anybody ever do that? You just use the whole product. And by the time you done scrubbed and rubbed and, and got in the bubble bath and get out of the bubble bath and then you spray on and you, you, you burnt up. <laughs> what am I saying? Start with one thing at one time. Don't try to, in, don't try to dive deep. When you know you in four feet, don't try to don't try to go deep. Stay in the shallow place until the Holy Spirit draws you to the deep. The Bible says, God, uh, the deep will call unto the deep. You haven't gone deep yet because the call has not been there. Because you've got to handle first things first. Clap right there. That's a great place to give God praise. Amen. So culturally, I said we are all made different. And I'm going to stop there. And Minister Griffey, can you come and do a little something, something on the, the keyboard? And I just want you to have a moment of um, examination based on what you heard. And thank those of you who are watching uh, by live stream. Bethel is a, a wonderful house of God. Uh, none of us are perfect because there's only one perfect person. And we know that to be Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. But listen, certainly uh, our mission is to love, heal, and grow with you in Christ Jesus. Don't you like that? The sound of that is so phenomenal. We are on a mission to love, heal, and grow together with you in Christ Jesus. For more information about this ministry, you can call our church office Monday through Friday, 10 to 6, 10 to 4 rather, excuse me, at 210-651-3331 and visit us on uh, Facebook. We have an Instagram and we also have a Twitter page. Go and make your uh, remarks and comments known. And if you don't have a church, you can at least come visit. We won't hold you hostage if this is not where you're supposed to be because there are many wonderful uh, uh, churches in this city. And we just want to say, hey, how you doing? Uh, next, as we go on to the conclusion of our time together today, I want you to think about which characteristic of God. I want every eye closed and, and either you lift your hands or you bow your head. And I want you to have a moment of reflection and repentance for why it is you have not expressed the image of God in you. Why you have not been the kingdom man or the kingdom woman that you need to be. Why you just a one day a week? You know, we know people work and what have you, but, but, but why am I not thirsty for God? Why am I not hungry for him? Why am I more comfortable with just part-time, temporarily doing things for him? And we just want you to search your heart and just ask God to show you this week where your character needs to change so that your characteristics can catch up with what the church is doing. So Father, we give your name praise. We give your name praise today. We say thank you, Lord. We say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. For you are worthy and wonderful and wise. Yes, you are wonderful. You are worthy. You are wise. You are wise. And we praise you. We don't want to get tired of praise. We Give us back our victory, God. Give us your glory. Give us your glory and your power so we can walk in victory. So we can be victory to somebody who's victimized. Yeah, yeah, yes, Lord. Yeah.
that you are going to have your way in these places that we're struggling, we're fatigued, we're tired, we don't understand, we're confused. We, we are going to let you have your way. And we just speak blessings over the members, the friends, the colleagues, and the constituents of Bethel International Christian Fellowship. Thank you for the many sons and daughters. Thank you for those who have been here, God, and have not been swayed by the season of change. We thank you in advance for our building, Father. We are coming nigh. It, it, it is coming, Father. It's coming, Father. It's coming. Because the members are going to do their part as kingdom minded to make sure that every part is jointly fitted together so that we can bust and move out of this place into our own facility. And we just say, yes, yes, Lord, it's going to happen. And we thank you in advance. It won't be stressful. It will be what you have for us. And we'll say, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, Lord, yeah. are dismissed from this place but never his presence greet somebody before you go and if you have not left your tithe and offering uh, we are asking you Deacon Fuller is bringing the reciprocal forward uh, we also